Guardian Spirit like that. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to uh, close the curtains a bit. Maybe that'll help the situation. Oh, bloody hell. See, the trouble with this monitor is it's so rubbish on the contrast. We have to pretty much uh, have a darkened room. And uh, that gives you terrible video quality. Absolutely. It's uh, too bright. Rudy presents. Banana Joe's Simpson. Yeah, whatever, mate. We all know it's George Fail and you had nothing to do with anything and it was uh, distributed free to any shop that wanted it by Commodore. It used to be uh, loaded up on the Commodore 64s in uh, Boots the Chemist where Michelle worked. What a beautiful person exactly the same age as me at the time she was. She must have had a birthday early in the year. She must have been uh, 16 before me, so technically she was older than me. Because uh, I was still 15 when I was going to Boots to buy like computer games, and she was working there. And you have to be at least 16 to work in, you know, a big, uh, big company with like loads of retail shops all over the country. So, synth sample. On the 64C, I don't know why I didn't think of this. Probably because this is an accident and I just found it. But anyway, to celebrate my uh, perfect game review that I did. We all, we all have to do at least one. And uh, yeah, for a game I've never owned before, that was a perfect uh, review of Sunburst. So, um, I shall be having some wagon wheels, but no extra marshmallows in there. I'm not a millennial, you know, it's not first prize for everyone who just takes part. Uh, 8580SID, regular waveforms, you know, no undocumented features being used uh, in synth sample from, I believe, the first version was 1984. So uh, well before the 8580 was a thing. So let's try listening to some of these uh, thingies. Ah, oh, no, the cat's on there. Buddy, can you sit on the Trinitron? Let me put you on the Trinitron, buddy. There you go. Sounds exactly the same to me. Sounds just as good on a 6581. Grungy output, my ass, mate. Stationary art was actually a TV show, I believe. It's quite heavily copyrighted. Uh, and this one I know because uh, uh, there's a song on that Vangelis well, tune on that Vangelis album, Spiral, that I like. It's number four. I can't remember what it's called actually. No, 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 not on the speaker, buddy. We're doing important SID testing. You go on that one. This, this is your favourite. You can't have both TVs, don't be greedy. I oh, know it's gonna sulk and jump off. I think he's just bored. He wants to join in the video, but it's too dark. There's no night vision on this camera. Alright, buddy. Uh, I don't know Magic Shadows, obviously uh, Clockwork Orange.
That's uh, classical music. I really should check that out. And of course, you know the game. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I still remember the tunes, mate. We used to listen to them in uh, in boots in our lunch hour, our school lunch hour. Yeah, our Commodore weren't a complete fuck up when Jack Trammell was there because uh, the, all the useless managers were uh, removed. strikes up the yin yang. Oh, I don't like listening to a uh, sit tune in the cold. Yeah, what you do is up to you mate. But, uh, Better. Huh? 
See, it would be nice to compare these with uh, the original tunes. Yeah, it sounds exactly the same. Doesn't sound better, doesn't it sound worse? Exactly the same. Wasting a lot of battery time on this. I mean, all these tunes back then in, uh, you know, 83, 84, whenever this thing was finished, would have been uh, really good. You know, it's like the title music for a game back then. I don't know which theme this is from uh, Wendy Carlos, I believe her name is now. Maybe it's the closing uh, thing. I've never watched Clockwork Orange. thought to uh, take a cassette in with me uh, into Boots and uh, you know stop the program and uh, just save it onto tape and play them at home I never thought of doing that maybe because that felt slightly illegal although technically this isn't this is freeware essentially to a Commodore to be, uh, you know, they can do what they want with him. He does actually explain the whole thing about how this happened on one of my videos. He, he was, he made a lot of comments, actually. There's even comments by Jerry Ellsworth and she's a subscriber to my channel, although I doubt she's watched it for like 15 years. But anyway, she was one of the first people to subscribe to my channel, which was kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so. It does actually sound, the main instrument sound like that on the album. It's very close. It's only the dum 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 business that's uh, a lot less basic. So maybe we found the first thing where Six five eight one's better because you get more bass. But if you're serious about SIG music, you should have a C64 connected to an amplifier and uh, you know one foot high. No, sorry, one and a half, two foot high speakers, proper hi-fi speakers, preferably three-way, two-way at a pinch, as long as they're a good one. They are quite short tunes that repeat, so... If you're a musician, you can't 
can't really say that the Sid was not the best sound chip if you're a musician. And that would make it the best 8-bit sound chip ever from a musician's point of view. But they don't care about, you know, sound chips in games consoles and 8-bit home computers. Mike Crowe. has a lot of character and you can impose your creative will much more effectively than on something like an AY chip or even a pokey and you play notes in 16 bit precision let's not forget that as well you need two bytes of data for every single note you want to get the seed to play and that's before you talk about all the advanced stuff the Atari Pokey to match that has to drop down to two channels so that's another thing people conveniently forget in the flame wars don't mind people having uh, different opinions, different tastes, but there are technical reasons why the CD is more powerful than Pokey. You can't get the same sounds out of both, so you have to accept that, but that's, that's normal. You can't display the same graphics on an Amstrad, a C64 or an Atari, they're all completely different have different restrictions so. but the only thing working against the SID chip is it doesn't have a true random generator for the white noise waveform it's kind of a hacky way of doing it but that's like complaining that the indicator clicking sound inside the car in a 1986 BMW 325i is a little loud that's only because the rest of the car is so fucking uh, refined compared to anything of uh, remotely the same size from any company. Rolls Royce didn't make uh, small uh, saloon cars. You know the gay famously uh, the main melody written. Uh, and on Andy McCluskey's uh, synthesizer that he bought from his mum's uh, mail order catalog like K's, Little Woods, things like that. And Tony Crawford who wrote some uh, cool 16 and 32 bit games started out with a Commodore 64, he was on the dog. He was at home. Uh, I don't know if he had the C64 before that, or he just bought one. And he just plugged away, started making games, and uh, made his way through life. You can't do shit like that now. You try finding uh, my game on the, uh, you know, the, the PlayStation Network, or, you know, what's the uh, Apple equivalent of that for the uh, game? App Store, is it called? See, I have... I don't have any interest in smartphones, but yeah, if you use a SID properly, the 8580 is perfectly acceptable for this like demo, I think, and basically, the extra bass is nicer than the 6581, but like I said, if you really like, you know, SID tunes, or even just general game music from the old 8 16 bit era you should be using whatever you're playing on with uh, you know an amplifier and some proper hi-fi speakers another perfect review by me